everyone i am dr dipika malik today we'll start with another chapter of bioanalytical techniques that is refractometry refractometry is a technique that measures how light is refracted when it passes through a given substance in this case an unknown compound the amount by which the light is refracted determines the refractive index refractive index can be used to identify an unknown liquid compound or it can be used as a means of measuring the purity of a liquid compound by comparing it to literature values the closer the refractive index is to the literature values the purer the sample is a refractometer measures the extent to which light is bent that is refracted when it moves from air into a sample and is typically used to determine the index of refraction also known as refractive index of a liquid sample now let us discuss what is refractive index the speed of light in a vacuum is always the same but when light moves through any other medium it travels more slowly since it is constantly being absorbed and remitted by the atoms in the material the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in another substance is defined as the index of refraction or refractive index for the substance the formula is given here the refractive index is commonly determined as part of the characterization of liquid samples the refractive index is a unitless number between 1.3000 and 1.7000 for most compounds and is normally determined to five digit precision since the index of refraction depends on both the temperature of the sample and the wavelength of light used these are both indicated when reporting the refractive index here as you can see in the example the italicized n denotes refractive index the superscript indicates the temperature in degrees celsius that is 20 degrees celsius and the subscript denotes the wavelength of light in this case the d indicates the sodium d line at 589 nanometer and 1.3742 is an example showing the refractive index of any substance the next slide discusses the principle of refractometry incident light which is a beam of light that is directed into the substance being measured the angle at which the light enters the substance is controlled refraction as the light enters the substance it changes direction due to the change in speed caused by the change in refractive index emergent light the refracted light emerges from the substance and is typically measured using a detector or observation system In the special case of light traveling perpendicular to the boundary there is no change in direction upon entering the new medium angle of refraction the relationship between light speed in the two mediums that is va and vb the angles of incidence denoted by theta a and refraction theta b and the refractive indexes of the two mediums na and nb can be represented by snell's law as you can see here VA upon VB is equal to sin theta A divided by sin theta B is equal to NB over NA. Critical angle. As the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction also increases. When the angle of incidence is equal to 90 degree, angle of refraction reaches its maximum value and is known as the critical angle. If the angle of incidence is greater than 90 degree, the ray is totally reflected. Most of the refractometers work on the principle of critical angle for measuring refractive index of a medium. How do we identify the samples using refractive index? It helps in identifying or confirming the identity of a sample by comparing its refractive index to known values. It assesses the purity of a sample by comparing its refractive index to the value for the pure substance. It determines the concentration of a solute in a solution by comparing the solution's refractive index to a standard curve. It also helps in determining the molar refraction which is characteristic of the given molecule. In the next slide we discuss what are specific and molar refractions. Specific refraction denoted by small r. The refractive index of a substance varies with the physical state of the substance, the temperature and the wavelength of light by which refractive index is observed. Lorenz and Lorenz in 1880 discovered that it is possible to define a quantity that is temperature independent. It is called specific refraction. They derived a relationship between refractive index and density of a liquid as you can see in the formula given below. 
where R denotes specific refraction, D denotes density and N denotes refractive index. Molar refraction denoted by capital R, the product of molecular weight and specific refractivity is called molar or molecular refractivity. It is a measure of the volume occupied by an atom or group of atoms. The value of molar refraction is characteristic of a substance. It is also temperature independent, but it depends upon the wavelength of light. Molar refractivity is expressed in centimeter cube, units of volume, molecular weight divided by density. Coming to refractometers. Abbey's refractometers are the preferred choice of instrument for measuring the refractive index. They are easy to use and provide the required precision of 0.001. Abbey's refractometers measures the critical angle of incidence for total internal reflection which is directly correlated to the refractive index. Working of Abbey's refractometer In the Abbey's refractometer, the liquid sample is sandwiched into a thin layer between an illuminating prism and a refracting prism as you can see in the diagram. The illuminating prism is made up of material with a known refractive index, often glass. This prism is located at the top of the instrument. The refracting prism is placed below the illuminating prism and is designed to hold the liquid sample. The refracting prism is made of a glass with a high refractive index, for our example 1.75 and the refractometer is designed to be used with samples having a refractive index smaller than that of the refracting prism, like in this case below 1.75. A light source is projected through the illuminating prism to its bottom surface which is roughened so that each point on the surface generates light rays travelling in all directions. Figure shows that light travelling from point A to point B will have the largest angle of incidence that is theta i and hence the largest possible angle of refraction that is theta r for the sample. All other rays of the light entering the refracting prism will have smaller angle of refraction and hence will lie to the left of the point C as you can see in the diagram. Thus a detector placed on the back side of the refracting prism would show a light region to the left and the dark region to the right. Samples with different refractive indexes will produce different angle of refraction. The angle of incidence and the refractive index of the prism are fixed and this will be reflected in a change in the position of the borderline between the light and dark region. By approximately calibrating the scale, the position of the borderline can be used to determine the refractive index of any sample. Applications of refractometry Chemical analysis Refractometry is used to determine the concentration of solutes in a solution, such as the concentration of dissolved sugars in beverages, pharmaceuticals and food products. This is based on the fact that the refractive index of the solution changes with its concentration. Quality control in food and beverage industries Refractometry is widely used to assess the quality and authenticity of food and beverages. It helps detect dilutions, adulteration or incorrect labeling of products. In pharmaceuticals, in pharmaceutical manufacturing, refractometry is employed to monitor the concentration of active ingredients in formulations and to ensure consistency in the production process. Petroleum industry, refractometry is used to measure the refractive index of crude oil and other petroleum products. It aids in determining the purity, composition and properties of different fractions in refining processes. Gemology, refractometry is used to identify gemstones by measuring their refractive indices which can be unique for different types of gemstones. Optics and lens design, refractometry is utilized in the design and fabrication of optical lenses and components helping engineers to optimize the performance of optical systems. Biomedical research, in biology and medical research, refractometry can be used to study cell density, concentration of macromolecules and change in biological fluids. Environmental monitoring, refractometry is employed in environmental studies to assess the salinity of water bodies which can affect aquatic ecosystems. Chemical and industrial processes, refractometry is used in various chemical and industrial processes to monitor concentrations of different compounds aiding in process control and optimization. Cosmetic industry, refractometry is used to analyze the refractive properties of cosmetic products ensuring consistency and quality. 
Sugar industry refractometry is commonly used to measure the sugar content in solutions such as during the production of sugar from sugarcane or beet. Environmental sciences refractometry can help in studying air pollution, aerosol particles and atmospheric conditions. So we have discussed the major principle and the major applications of refractometry in this video. Thank you for watching. For any doubts and query, you can contact me through the given email ID.